This is a car that I've always dreamt of owning, the Land Rover Defender. But I was never really sure how it would fit into my life. Sure, if you collect cars and you've got the money, then you can buy one and just have it sat in your garage because you can afford to do so. But for me, I've got to justify when I buy a car. I need to be able to use it every single day as a daily driver and get the most out of the vehicle. I'm in somewhat of a fortunate position because me and my wife own a wedding car hire business as well as a photography and film business. So when it came to buying a Land Rover Defender, I thought it was win-win-win because we could buy it and offset the cost of owning this vehicle against the business, particularly because we can hire this out as a wedding car. It's practical enough to use for all of our shoots. It's got a big enough boot and seven seats, so it seemed like the perfect choice. Not to mention that it may be a future classic and it may appreciate in value. But I was ever so slightly wrong. <laughs> When it came to buying the Defender, I had a couple of considerations. The first thing I was thinking of doing was buying an older TD5, a car with higher mileage and one that was already a little bit beat up. And then I could do whatever I wanted to do with it. I could put my own take on it. Plus, with it being an older car and one that's already beat up, I wouldn't mind taking it off-road and scratching the paint. But I went for this, the newer Puma, a car with less miles, shinier bodywork, air conditioning, oh, and heated seats. So very fancy when it comes to a Defender. But in all honesty, I wanted a Defender that had some luxuries. I wanted leather covered everything. I wanted a fancy sat nav and CD player. I wanted those things that you just become used to in driving modern day cars. There was one other consideration, however. A few years ago, I was on my way to do a little bit of filming at a place called Khan, and these are one of these aftermarket customizers. And on my way there, I must admit, I was dead against this idea. I had a vision of a few guys in a shed, carbon fiber wrapping bonnets, and I just thought it was ultimately tacky. But when I arrived, it was the complete opposite to what I'd imagined. It's a really skilled group of people doing amazing things to these cars to make them even more beastly. And the skill set and the level of which they do these conversions is incredible. And I would love one of those Khan vehicles or similar vehicles from other manufacturers, but they are so expensive and they really are designed for millionaires and footballers. So when this car came up for sale, looking the way it did with low mileage, we were really, really interested. The only real problem was is that we're based in Liverpool and this car was for sale in Portsmouth. So there was a few hundred miles separating us and we didn't really have the time to drive all the way to Portsmouth to look over the car. And in the photos, the car looked absolutely mint. So after speaking to the dealership, we decided to buy the vehicle and we put everything in place and took delivery of the car. Now this is where we made our first mistake really because once we took delivery of the car, in all honesty, if I would have viewed the car before making the commitment to buying it, I may have passed on it because there were a few elements of the vehicle that I just wasn't very happy with. There was a little bit of corrosion on the bodywork and some of the aftermarket parts weren't that very good quality. So initially, I was a little bit disappointed in this vehicle. Now I know this is a Defender and you may be sat there thinking why on earth are you worried about a little bit of bubbling paintwork but the amount of money that we'd spent on this car I had expected a vehicle that was in pristine condition as if it had just rolled off the production line. One that didn't need a trip to the body shop the moment I took ownership. If I wanted that I should have bought an older TD5 and took it to the body shop and done exactly what I wanted to do with it. So I suppose you could say we got off to a little bit of a bad start. <laughs> Now, a couple of weeks into owning this car, I took it to work. I was on a photo shoot in Liverpool city centre and knowing how attractive these vehicles are to car thieves, I decided to park in the most secure car park I could find. It was a queue park, it was underground, it was secure. I went on my shoes and when I came back, somebody had pushed this rear window open. And in fairness, it's quite easy to do. Now, luckily there was nothing in the back of the car because I had all the equipment with me on the shoes and I never leave anything in my car anyway when I'm not with it. But it was a stark reminder of how easy it is to gain access into the actual cabin and steal things. Around the same time, a friend of mine who has a Defender 90 had his doors, his bonnet and his headlights stolen. 
off his car during the night and he lives in a really posh area too. So I was becoming increasingly concerned for the security and the well-being of my car. Although I did have some elements of security, I booked into the body shop to get the bits of bodywork that I was unhappy with, which I told you about when I very first bought it. So whilst the car was at the body shop, it got stolen. And many of you know this because it was the first film that we made on the channel. So my introduction to owning a Land Rover Defender was a little bit tainted. And it's gone really, really cold out here. Now there are many people who daily drive these cars and good on them. If I was looking to daily drive a Defender, I would be tempted to buy an older one. Something that I don't mind taking off road and using it in the way it was intended to be used. Or if you want a collector's piece, buy one like this and pop it in your garage driving it only between the hours of 9am and 4pm on bank holiday Mondays when the weather is perfect. Now let me give you a little tour of the car and we'll start at the front where it's at its most imposing. There's enough off-road gubbins on here to convince anybody that you're a die-hard off-roader. And we'll start with the winch for winching things. Now this winch did cause a little bit of a problem when it comes to the license plate because it took the space of where the plate should sit. So we have to have this completely road legal plate made. We've got light guards to protect the LED lights which are super super bright and actually really really good. Probably the most used thing of all on the front are these tread plates and I use this quite frequently for standing on the front of the car for photographing things which are really useful. We've got the snorkel for snorkeling and then we've got enough lamps and lights on the front to illuminate the entirety of the Isle of Man. Moving on to the flank you can see that my Defender sat on these super beefy BF Goodridge tyres which really enhance the ride and handling of the car. One of my favourite things of the Defender is the fact that you can see these rivets. So I love this, it reminds me of cars of a bygone era and I just love the fact that you can see these rivets right along the flank, it's, it's fantastic. I really like this roof light which just lets extra light into the cabin and it's something that you just don't really see anymore. Sure you get panoramic sunroofs and glass windows that stretch from the front of the back to the car but just something as simple as this really helps with the light in the cabin. We've then got our roof rails which are great for the once a year trip to Ikea. At the back of the car there are a few features worth pointing out. We have a reversing camera which is really really useful and you may be saying why on earth would you want a reversing camera in a Land Rover Defender? It's too utilitarian for that. But the vehicle is quite long and with this spare wheel mounted here the rear window is quite small so it can make judging where the back end of your car is whilst parking a little bit tricky. Now there's also front and rear parking sensors that have been added to this vehicle so there is really no excuse if you were to prank this car in a car park. We then have a collection of steps which leads to this ladder, so when you're at the safari park and you want to take a better look at the lions, you can get onto the roof really easily. I was dead set on having a 110 and having seven seats. I thought having the extra seats in the back would make the whole thing of owning a Land Rover Defender just a little bit more practical, the idea that we can carry extra people I thought was a win. But the seats are quite large so they take up quite a lot of space in the back even when they're folded up so on reflection maybe this wasn't the best idea because it does limit the back considerably and I do know of a lot of people that have actually taken these seats out just to allow for the extra space. Now on top of that and again I'm sorry for moaning but these chairs are an absolute nightmare to get down let me demonstrate and here's where it'll probably make a liar out of me now but you have a couple of handles so you've got to pull this and that comes down and then you have to pull that but then this is where it's got to kind of click in there we go is that clicked in and then you pull pull that up and then you have to kind of jiggle across and you've got to watch your legs when you pull this but that's not clicked in so you've got to push that down and then pull that and then there you go so it's not as straightforward as a lot of modern cars now getting them back packed away is also a little bit of a challenge and I can never really remember how on earth you do it. You kind of have to push. There's definitely cars that are easier to put the third row of seats up and down but I'm not complaining, I'm not complaining at all. This is a Defender, it's not supposed to be easy. Once in the cabin of the car this is where it's all happening. Absolutely everything is covered in leather. The seats, the steering wheel, the door cards, the dashboard, the ceiling. It just creates a real luxurious place to be. And sure, some people may frown upon the idea of a Defender being treated in this way. And I'd somewhat agree. This is a utilitarian vehicle. And when you're sat in a field like this off-roading, you don't want to be getting in and getting mud all over your leather. But 
I don't really use this car for this type of environment. I use it around town where this adapted head unit is really, really useful, where it's connected to the reversing camera, where I can connect my phone to it and play music. There's just little touches in this vehicle that make it feel a little bit more like a modern day car, but it's still got its heritage. Of course, it's still a Defender, so it's unmistakably an off-roader, but just these little touches just really enhance the pleasure of driving it. I must also say that the rear seats, there's no transmission tunnel, so it's quite easy to get three passengers in the back. Whilst I joke about the third row of seats being difficult to come up and down, they are easy enough done and they're relatively spacious, so this car can carry seven people with ease. If you're tall like me, then the Defender isn't the most comfortable car to drive. There's virtually nowhere to put your right arm. And you're grateful for the summertime when you can put the window down so you've got a little bit of an armrest. The clutch is very heavy and mine's got a really annoying squeak at the moment, which I should lubricate. The gearbox feels like that of a manual tractor from the late 60s. But this is the whole point, so don't mistake me for moaning, because although I sound as though I'm moaning, I'm actually really grateful, because this is what makes the Defender great. These things are awesome to drive. It's these quirks that just make it so much fun. And you have to remember that this wasn't designed for me, for some photographer to bounce around the city in. It was designed for exploring it's been to all the corners of the earth, it's been used by the military, it's been used by some of the greatest people on earth to do some of the most tremendous things. So what do I have to worry about? A heavy clutch. The design of the Defenders remained pretty much unchanged since it was revealed in 1948 and of course they stopped making these cars in 2016 but it has now been replaced by a fancy new Defender but I feel as though the new Defenders lost a little bit of the, this car's original character and that's a little bit of a shame. I think what's interesting is that these, this model of Defender, the prices have somewhat skyrocketed. I checked yesterday and I went online and I seen one that wasn't too dissimilar to this car in terms of all of its extras with leather seats and snorkels and all those stupid fancy bits. Sure, it was a little bit newer, it had less mileage and it had some sort of fancy air suspension, but that car was listed for £79,000. £79,000! Grand. That's insane for a Defender. And I don't really know what that means for Land Rover Defender ownership. I don't know whether it's a good thing to own this. I don't know whether I should sell it now and get what I can for it. I don't know whether to keep hold of it and be sat on a nest egg that I can retire on in a few years' time. I really don't know. I'd be really interested to know your thoughts on this. So please comment in the section below and let us know what you think, whether I should sell this car or whether I should keep it or whether it's a good time for people to buy these vehicles what is going on with the Defender market right now? Although I've never actually driven this very car off-road, I have driven Defenders in their natural habitat before. And I must say, they are one of the best cars I've ever driven off-road. They are absolute machines and so much fun. And for as much moaning that I do about this car, I must say, I absolutely love it. And when it comes to the question of should you buy a Land Rover Defender, then I would ultimately say yes. Now, whether you spend 79 grand on one is another matter, but I would be tempted to buy an older TD5 and put your own take on it and do it up. They are absolutely amazing cars and they have so much character. I really, really, really do love them. Now, thanks for watching this content. We really do appreciate it. And if you've enjoyed it, then please like and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next week.